it turns out that the causal effects that defined earlier, uh, we have already made some assumptions. The first assumption, which probably is cre uh, already clear to you, is that we assume the achievement variable or canvassing causes turnout, not the other way around. We call this no reverse causality. The outcome does not cause treatment. In the observed data, we see the different values of the treatment and the outcome. And so without assuming the causal ordering, we wouldn't know which is causing which. As a consequence of no reverse causality, we also ended up assuming there's no simultaneity. That is, T and Y don't cause each other. This is a very important assumption that's, um, that's often made um, for many much of the causal influence literature. The second, we assume that so-called consistency. That is, whenever the treatment takes some value, in the binary case either 0 or 1, we observe y of 1 or y of 0. This assumption would be violated. For example, there's hidden multiple version of the treatment. The canvassing may co uh, consist of different messaging. Okay. So even though canvassing was recorded as 0, 1, whether you were canvassed or not, different uh, messaging may change turnout in a different way for any given voter. If that happens, this assumption will be violated, even if this same voter, a given voter, is canvassed, depending on um, the messages, they may uh, act differently. They may, whether, you know, whether turnout or not, uh, might, might default. Similarly, we assume no hidden different administration of treatment. So even though canvassing is done, it could be done in a different way. Maybe at a different time of the day, maybe a different person, by male canvasser versus female canvasser, younger or older canvasser. All of that different administrations may lead to different outcome. If that assumption, uh, if that happens, this assumption would be violated, uh, strictly speaking. But of course, in any given uh, study, this is happening all the time. The, the canvassers will be visiting different households at a different time. Often different canvassers are visiting different households. So this is, these assumptions appear not to hold. What we end up um, saying is changing the interpretation. That is, changing the interpretation of what we mean by treatment. So we can broaden the definition by saying that canvassing may include uh, different time of the day, different person, different messaging. And so when we talk about the causal effect of canvassing, the treatment may include all of those different versions and different um, administrations. So it's, it's mostly, it's end up changing um, the interpretation of the causal effect uh, even though this is stated as assumption. If we want to know what is uh, the impact of male canvassers versus female canvasser, we will have to define each of these treatment as a different, um, different treatment condition, and then we'll, of, of course measure uh, the gender of the uh, canvasser as well. Now lastly, um, we always also assumed no interference between units. In other words, we assumed the potential outcome, my potential outcome, is only a function of my own treatment and does not depend on other um, units' treatment status. So on the left-hand side, left side of the equation, which is very general, is yi is defined, uh, the potential outcome is defined as a function of n treatment uh, state variables. So the treatment status of unit one, treatment status of unit two, all the way to treatment status of uh, unit n. We assume that that is equal to yi of ti, your own treatment status alone. We can ignore the treatment status of other units. Okay. So this was a very important assumption to make it simp uh, to simplify the potential outcome. If in fact my potential outcome can 
uh, be affected by the treatment status of any other units, then there is a two to the end ways or uh, potential outcomes that could happen depending on the different combination of the treatment status of other units. It might be the fact that um, if my spouse is treated, that would impact me, or maybe my mother or my father is uh, treated, that, that also may in, uh, impact me differently. And any of those combination could also lead to different potential outcomes. We eliminated all that potential outcomes and then reduce it to the two potential outcomes, which only depend on my own treatment status. Okay, so this assumption of treatment of no other units affecting uh, one's outcome allowed us to write the potential outcome um, in a simple way, reducing it to only two potential outcomes as opposed to the two to the end uh, possible potential outcomes that could have happened if we allow other units to affect your potential outcome. Now let's think about this a little bit more. Okay? So think about interference within the two voter household. Suppose uh, interference only happens uh, within within the household, and then there are only two voters in this household. It's possible that the, both me and my partner could be treated okay? when thinking about my own potential outcome. Neither might be treated, that's also possible, or I'm the only one who is treated, or my partner is the only, uh, only one who is treated. Okay, so total, there are four possible potential outcomes, four uh, possible my potential outcomes, depending on whether I'm treated and also whether my partner is treated. We can think about the spillover effect. So the first equation tells you, suppose I'm not treated, but my, what is the impact of my partner getting treated on my outcome? Okay, so going from my partner being treated to my partner being in control condition, what is the difference in between the two potential outcomes? I could also hold my treatment constant at being canvas, being treated, and then we could change the uh, partner's uh, treatment status and then see how that um, affects my potential outcome. So that do these two be the uh, spillover effects, within household spillover effects, the impact of partner's treatment status on my outcome. We can also think about the direct effects of my own treatment, holding my partner's treatment status constant. So the first equation, hold the partner's uh, treatment status at the control condition, and the second equation, hold the partner's uh, co treatment condition at the treatment, uh, treated status. Okay? And then changing my own treatment status from zero to one. And what would be the difference in my potential outcome? Okay, so these are direct effects of my own treatment while holding my partner's condition, treatment condition constant. So these are two different quantity of just spillover effects and direct effects. We can generalize this definition to not just the two people in the household, but any number of people. Okay? So in that context, the spillover effect is defined as treatment effect. Your own treatment is held at constant zero T and changing the treatment status of others from T to T prime. Direct effects also can be um, defined as holding the other people's treatment uh, status constant. So the T minus one I is the treatment vector except the I uh, unit. Holding that constant at T and then changing your own treatment status from zero to one and looking at how that changes the potential outcome, your own potential outcome. Now we've been talking about the causal effects of immutable characteristics. So oh. now we've been talking about causal effects, but I'd like to next discuss the causal eff effect of immutable characteristics. The Paul Horan in his uh, famous 1986 paper in Journal of American Statistical Association, he said, no causation without manipulation. That is, we cannot define causal effect of variable if we cannot imagine manipulating that variable. What this means is the immutable characteristics such as gender or race or age 
are very uh, from this view, this point of view, it's impossible to define the causal effects of these immutable characteristics or attributes because it's difficult for us to think about manipulating the gender or race or age. Okay, unlike sending the canvassers or uh, giving the medical treatment, which are easy to imagine manipulating. Um, however, gender, race, and age are very difficult to think about manipulating those uh, characteristics. Okay. Then it's hard to imagine what, I, what it means to be Y of 1 or Y of 0. Take a gender, for example. What would be my um, outcome? Say outcome is a job. My job would have been if I were female. That might be a very difficult question to answer or even define because I'm born as a male. Okay, it's a part of my identity. There are many ways to, there are philosophical uh, debates about this, this point of view, um, but from the pra practical point of view, there are many uh, different strategies, research design strategies to address uh, this difficult question of what it means by causal effects of uh, immutable characteristics. Um, can immutable characteristics have meaningful causal effects? So there are different strategies that are out there, um, which I want to briefly introduce. The first, you can imagine thinking about causal effects or perceived characteristics. So we are not thinking about manipulating the characteristics themselves, but we are trying to manipulate the perception of things like gender or race. So there's a famous uh, experiment uh, looking at the causal effect of job applicants, gender, and race by sending the fictitious CVs with uh, different names that imply certain gender or certain uh, racial groups. So this, this is basically trying to manipulate the potential employer's perception of job applicants, gender, or race instead of manipulating job applicants, gender, and race themselves. The second uh, strategy is, is what I might call reinterpretation. The uh, example of this is that thinking about causal effect of having a female politician on policy outcomes. Again, in a uh, well-known study, the authors looked at uh, what is the impact of having a female politician. That doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it's the effect of gender of the politician alone because it's not that you take one partition and then changes that person's gender from male to female. Okay. So the counterfactual is a village having a female partition versus village having a male partition. So those two are the contrast. Since the female partitions tend to be different from male partition in many other dimensions, such as education or income, or maybe ideology, that it may not be the gender of partition per se that causes certain outcome. However, it is still well-defined quantity, causal effect, if we say it's a causal effect of having female partition on policy outcomes, even though the female partition may have different um, uh, other characteristics from the male partition. We can also redefine um, the gender effect or race effect. Um, in a um, paper by Maya Sen and Omar Waso, they think of race as a bundle of sticks. So there are different dimensions to the race, such as uh, skin color or the neighborhoods you've grown up in or socioeconomic status. So instead of defining the causal effects of race, you can also look at the causal effects of each of these characteristics separately. Finally, we can also think of a group-level intervention uh, question as the um, effects of race or gender. Uh, Tyler Vanderwill and Robinson uh, consider the, snap, uh, the intervention that what would happen if racial disparity go away if we equalize socioeconomic status of blacks and whites. So in this case, you can imagine thinking about changing uh, coming up with a policy that equalizes educational distribution between the blacks and whites. And what would be the impact of that policy on some societal or other types of outcomes? Okay. 
again, this is not the same, not, this is different from changing somebody's race uh, and instead thinking about what would happen if we equalize some of these racial disparities or eliminate these racial disparities. So uh, effects, it's easy to sort of often casually refer to the effects of race, effects of gender, but if you really think about how you measure it, how you estimate the causal effects, it's much more complicated and, and I would like you to think about, uh, carefully about these issues. Now we've been uh, defining the individual level effects and as I said, the individual level, unit level causal effects are difficult to estimate in part because we never observe y of zero and y of one at the same time. In, in, yet the causal effect is a contrast between those two potential outcomes. What we can do is so uh, we can average them over sample units and then try to infer the average streaming effects. So for example, we can look at the sample average streaming effect, which uh, simply takes the average of unit causal effect over n borders in the study. Okay, so this is one interpretation, one way to interpret this is what would happen if everybody gets treated? What would be the average outcome if everybody gets treated versus nobody gets treated? Okay, so the mean outcome under the treatment, which is the mean of y of one, contrasted with mean of y of zero which is the mean outcome when the nobody is treated. Sample average streaming effect for the treated uh, is, may also be interested in, of interest if, for example, uh, if you think about something like a job training program. Okay. Uh, job training program uh, is administered only for those people uh, who are unemployed. So it might be interesting to know whether the participants of the job training program, what would happen to those people if they didn't receive the treatment. Okay. So in this case, we're looking at the sub-sample, the treatment, average treatment effect for the sub-sample among the flu who actually received the treatment, and then try to figure out what would happen to these people if they didn't um, receive the job training program. So this is often used uh, the quantity that's of interest to the policymakers who like to assess the impact of a particular program, um, you know, certain program evaluation. Now notice that if you're treated, Y of one is observed. So mean outcome in the treatment group is observed. So what we need to infer is the mean outcome of the control potential outcome under, among, among the people who are actually treated. Those are the counterfactual uh, outcomes that needs to be uh, inferred. So that's called the sample average streaming effect for the treated. Okay. Since the treated group and the control group may be different if there is a selection into the treatment, the SATT uh, SAT may be different from SATE uh, SIT. Finally, we can uh, this is a sample in sample uh, quantity, but we can also look at the population uh, level quantity as well. So if you think of the sample as a representative um, of the particular population, we can also define the average treatment effect in the population. What would happen if everybody in the population gets treated and what would happen to the average outcome in that population if everybody treated versus nobody treated. That would be the paid uh, population average stream impact. And in the same manner, um, PATT, population average stream effect for the treated, is what would be the uh, average stream effect for the treated uh, in the population for which this sample is representative of. Okay. So there might be a target population of the people who got particular job training program, and then your data may only uh, be a sample from that population. There are lots of other common causal quantity of interest uh, that we'll, we'll cover in the subsequent um, lectures. One is to think about not just the average effect, but uh, thinking about heterogeneous stream effects. So here, one may be interested in conditional average stream effect, conditioning on pre-treatment characteristic values. So maybe we're interested in 
average tumor infect for the male versus average tumor infect for the female, average tumor infect for the old versus um, young, different ratio groups, and so on. The same treatment may have very different effects depending on your characteristics, your um, pre-treatment characteristics. So this type of uh, quantity is very important um, in, the, in the applications to precision medicine or micro-targeting. Um, you might want to change the treatment strategy depending on who those units are. Don't confuse this with the individual treatment effect. Um, as I said, individual treatment effect is never, um, never be observed at the, because we don't observe Y of 1 and Y of 0 at the same time, and so we often focus on the average effect. The subgroup effects, such as Kate, conditional average treatment effect, on the other hand, can be estimated by looking at the particular subgroup, but still using the multiple observations from that group. There's also non-additive effects. Uh, there's something called quantile treatment effects that could be of interest, say, if you're looking at the income as a, uh, income or test scores as the outcome. You may not care about the average effect. You may care about how the median or uh, bottom 20% uh, tile changes due to the treatment. So example might be the median of Y of 1 minus median of Y of 0. So that how much median shifts uh, by the treatment. Okay, so the median score, test score may change. Uh, now, remember this is not the same as median of the individual uh, treatment effect. Okay? It's a difference in the median of Y of 1, Y of 0. Because we don't observe individual level causal effect, it's very difficult to compute the median of the causal effect. Okay. But we, we can observe the marginal distribution, so we can look at the median of the outcome under the treatment condition and median of the outcome under the control condition separately. We can also look at something like odds ratio, where in the numerator you have odds the probability of success, y equal 1, divided by probability of failure, y equal 0, under the treatment condition, and in the denominator, you have odds under the control condition. And the question is, does the odds um, increases or decreases uh, due to the treatment uh, variable? So there's different, uh, these are known additive effects. So it doesn't have to be always the difference between y of y and y of 0, it could be some other quantitative interest uh, that you can estimate.